states. It's a small island developing states and least developed countries. The future of the world is lost and damaged if we go past them. For the survival. In finishing, I'll finish with the same from my the 1.5 called the lion. The OSIS continues to amplify our call to keep 1.5 alive. For our islands, there is no alternative. This is our red line. AOSIS call on our major emitters to enhance the commitments aligning the NDCs with the 1.5 degree goal, leading the way on fossil fuel phase out, phasing out all inefficient fossil fuel subsidies, and ensuring peaking of global emissions by 2025 and halving them by 2030, transitioning to global net zero global emissions by 2050. No, because I don't know the... Like always, they want to be assured that they will survive. They want to be assured that what that, that their trust in us to be here to amplify their voices and for the world to uh, understand their, 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 our, their concerns and for us to, to make sure that the right global decisions are made to ensure that they will continue to live on the island, they continue to uh, survive. Um, I do as well want to aim the TC to link 1.5 it does seem a bit like that is the undertone going on currently in this COP, and we see it in the global stock take rooms, we see it in the mitigation rooms, we see it in the adaptation rooms. We see this call for small island developing states and least developed countries. You got what you want. Now be quiet. And I think it's quite clear from what both chairs have said is that we will not be quiet because it is both the reason why we're discussing loss and damage is from climate inaction. Sustainable future. On, finally, on climate finance, parties must deliver on the- We're going to be looking to the presidency for his leadership to, to, to deliver on what he has said, which is that 1.5 is the North Star for this COP, and, and we're here to hold him to that. We know from the IPCC what we And at this COP, what is 